so happy to see you. <laughs> yeah, I miss you. I miss you. I did not like the image of that. Oh, my God. I feel like I threw up in my mouth. Kim's son Jamal and Usman meet in person for the first time in Nigeria. And I know that all I'm about to see in the comments is, Jamal is so fine, Jamal is so fine. Yes, he is handsome, but let's not allow that to distract us, okay? He is the voice of reason that Kim needs in her ear right now. I feel like you didn't like me. I'm her son, you know? Like, I've seen her get screwed over by so many men. Especially after Usman revealed that instead of taking on a second wife, he's considering adopting his brother Muhammad's child and having Kim help raise the baby. There's one called Mahadi. It's Muhammad's uh, child, and I love him so much. So I was like, why not adopt him as my son? Take care of him, and he'll be my son forever. Hmm. It sounds like it could be endearing, but instead, it's a whole mess that gets even messier when Usman reveals that his brother knows nothing about his plan. Wait, 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 wait. So Muhammad doesn't even know that you've been thinking about adopting his child? I did not tell him what I want to do, but I invite him there in Abuja now. I don't know about you, but I personally would feel guilty taking a child away from his mother and father just so my dreams could come true. Look at this little boy. He doesn't look like he wants to leave his daddy, and his daddy definitely looks like he doesn't want to give him up. <laughs> Let's get into it. Hey 90 Day Fans fam, it's Melicia. Whew, I took a week off, I got some rest, now I'm feeling rejuvenated. I hope you're feeling good, and if you're not, hopefully our time together makes you feel better. Before we get into Jamal and Usman meeting face to face, first, I wanna give you an update on Shida and Bilal. Oh wow! It feels like I could be up here forever, being with my favorite human being in the entire world for now until kids come. Ah, for now. For now. These two are still in New York City, and after taking a nice romantic helicopter ride, Shida lets Bilal know that she's not going to allow the romance to distract her from the fact that time is ticking, and she deserves a clear answer from him about when they're gonna try to have a baby. I'm not going to be in a relationship with anyone, whether they give me the moon or the stars and not have a child. Whoever said that they, they wasn't having a child. I have been very consistent since the time I met you up until now with everything. You are the only one that I've ever met who's constantly changing. After the doctor's visit, everything should be consistent. That should have been a shift. It shows me that what Dr. Marabli told me about my results, you disregarded it completely and it means nothing to you. Just a refresher, I know I've said this before, but I'm gonna say it again, just so you know. The doctor told Shida that her ovarian reserve is low. So at the age of 37, if she wants to conceive naturally, she and Bilal need to start trying as soon as possible. I am so serious. You need to give me an answer, and I have to see if I'm comfortable with that answer. Shida goes on to tell Bilal she's giving him up to nine months to give her an answer. Meanwhile, he thinks she's being inconsiderate of his feelings and not taking into account that this would be his child too, and not just hers. It's almost like it gave me an ultimatum. And that's the reason why I sometimes have my guard up, lets me know that you're not 100% and you're not in. Blau, y'all are married. Why are you testing her? She's clearly in. In my opinion, this has nothing to do with her being 100% or being in. What this is about is a woman who has a dream of being a mother to birth her own child and her time is running out, period. Anyone who has ever wanted something really bad and knew the chances were slim can understand her anxiety. This is her life, her legacy, time she's not gonna get back. And you know, what I really think is going on here is that Bilal was scared. Bilal was scared that history is going to repeat itself. He revealed in a previous episode that having kids with his first wife and she leaving him was traumatic. So to me, him making this statement about Shida not being 100% or being in. That's the reason why I sometimes have my guard up, lets me know that you're not 100% and you're not in. Just proves that for one, he tends to flip things back on her. If he doesn't trust her, I don't see why he married her in the first place. And two, that he's allowing his fear of a worst case scenario based off of what happened in his past to drive his decisions in his current relationship which is understandable, it happens, but 
he should consider taking some time to work through that. I'm 100%, but it can't be going your way all the time. Baby, none of this is going my way. I do everything for you. Let me ask you something. What have you done for me? Oh, no, he didn't hit her with the... I think I even heard him stump his foot out. Let me ask you something. What have you done for me? Oh, goodness, below. <laughs> I'm not gonna even answer go. that question. Peter exactly. changed your serum. Exactly. You don't wanna answer it, Shy? I will. She left her family behind in Trinidad. She left her business behind. And she signed your prenup. Come on, Bilal. <laughs> if someone was to say that to me, I would say, look, I'm giving you the gift of my presence. That's doing a lot right there. I know it sounds petty, but frankly, I. It's facts. Also, side note, I think people should be careful when they say things like, what have you done for me in a relationship? Now, some people really are with people who don't do anything for them, but I think it's important to remember that people show and give love in different ways. Just because Bilal might do a lot for Shida in a material sense, doesn't mean that what she does for him, which might not be as visible, isn't just as worthy. If I don't get an answer from you, when it comes to having a child, like how soon? That will definitely break our relationship. And I mean every word that I say. It's beyond hurtful to hear Shai say that this could break us. If she believes that having a baby is the only thing that validates us being together, then it worries me that she really, really wants to break up. Like, if you don't do it my way, then it's the highway. I personally didn't get the gist that Shida thinks having a baby would validate them as a couple. The way I see it, she just wants to have a child of her own. Way to ruin a moment. Did Bilal not get the memo? <laughs> the main piece of marriage advice I hear from men is that you don't have to say everything you think. It's like he wants her to feel bad. Fast forward, Shida meets up with her friend Eutris before she heads back to Europe. And Eutris tells Shida the plan she came up with after chatting with Bilal. So I was thinking, what if he accidentally takes your blood control pills? If I? Mm -hmm. Beatrice, this, this is the next thing I never open you up on. I'm not on no blood control pills. He is using protection. <gasps> I yes, yeah, so what? there's no like not Jesus. taking blood control pills to try yeah, to get baby. pregnant. Jesus Christ, this is the worst matter. This is worse than I thought. So he played me when he told me basically that if you get pregnant, you welcome the child. And he's using male contraception. Yeah. Hun, he does not want to have a child. At all costs. Eutris goes on to ask Shida if she had to choose, would she choose her marriage or having a baby? And Shy gets real. Like right now, how mm. I feel? Mm. I would choose having a baby. I'm glad she stuck up for herself. But she needs to toughen up and don't waver in her opinion because basically that is how he's going to basically get his way with her. So if she's not pregnant in nine months, she just needs to go, leave him. Now the question is, how is she gonna handle the nine months? Is she gonna continue to bring it up? Is she gonna give it some space to breathe? It's gonna be interesting to see how it all plays out. I'm not sure what's in store for these two, but present day, they seem to be doing fine, <laughs> at least on social media. <laughs> they are making a number of reels with the hashtag couple goals. I know social media isn't always the best reflection of reality, but things seem to be working out. Either way, time will tell. All right, let's get into the biggest must-see moment from this week. Kim's son Jamal and Usman meeting for the first time in person. The main reason for my trip is to find out more about this adoption thing, because it's a lot to think about for me and for Usman. It's been four months since Kim last saw Usman. The last time they were together, the immigration attorney shut down their plan for Usman to marry a second wife so he can have a child. She made it clear that polygamy is illegal in the US. Now, as Kim mentioned, she's headed back to Nigeria to learn more about Usman's plan to adopt his brother's son. 
and she's taking her son, Jamal, with her. My son loves you, you know that one. I love your son, too. <laughs> Especially this last episode, I was like, yes, Jamal, be the voice of reason. Yeah, tell him to shut up. <laughs> it's gonna be really important for Jamal to be by my side when I meet Usman's nephew the child I may adopt because this child will be in Jamal's life too. And I want to have Jamal's acceptance because I really don't know if I could raise a child in an environment where Jamal is against it. I think my mom is really gonna try to force me to like Usman or something. Um, I just hope he's himself and he doesn't try to do too much because I'll see right through that. I think that when you see him in person and you see the, how him and I are together, it's gonna make you feel better about the relationship, you know? I hope so. Yeah. Speaking of seeing how Kim and Usman are together, once she and Jamal arrive in Nigeria, things get off to an interesting start for Jamal after he sees his mom locking lips with Usman. You know who this is? Bro, what's up? What's up, man? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You're looking good. Hey, baby. <laughs> Wait, let's see that face one more time, Jamal. <laughs> With the stretch, his body language screams awkward. Love you. Love you, baby. So let's go, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So happy to see you. <laughs> I love you. I miss you. Uh... I did not like the image of that. Oh, my God. I feel like I threw up in my mouth. But it's my first time out of the US. Uh, Glad to be in the motherland, honestly. I know, that's right. I know my mom wants my support, but I don't really trust Usman. And I don't really want Usman to prove himself to me. I just want him to be himself. Because I'll notice if he's trying too hard. You know, I can read a room really well. You all right? Yeah. Usman looks extremely happy right now. <laughs> Once they get to the hotel and get settled, they sit down to have dinner together. It just kind of hit me. I'm like, I don't know the last time I've sat with you and like a boyfriend or fiance or anything. And we all just like ate together, you know, like a family. It's crazy. how. Yeah, kind of weird. <laughs> Usman is kind of giving off stepdad vibes right now. He goes on to tell Jamal that he hopes Nigeria will become his second home, just like it's Kim's. My just second home? Yeah. Just the way it is, second home to Kimbali. And Jamal found a way to kindly tell Usman, hold on, hold on, bro. I just got here. I mean, we'll see how this trip goes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like you didn't like me. I'm her son, you know? Like, I've seen her get screwed over by so many men. The only thing that bothers me a lot is, like, you know, like, I've been with her for, like, a year plus. If I'm not a good person, there's you no know how she can hide it for you for a year. Well, what Kim has told Jamal over the past year has him concerned. I think it's safe to say that Usman isn't a terrible person, okay? But the situation has not been ideal. I'm going to get you a gift. What? Yeah. <laughs> Usman blindfolds Jamal with what appears to be a pair of his pants and goes to get the gift. I'll be honest, I thought to myself, was getting Jamal a gift Kim's idea or Usman's? You know, Kim is good with the gifts. Y'all remember the laptop? the PlayStation, and the Soldier Boy chain that she gave Usman before they were even in a relationship? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I thought about it. I said, I'm gonna give Usman the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it wasn't Kim's idea to get the gift. Maybe he thought about it on his own and bought it himself. Let me know what you think. I would love it for me and him to be, like, close, to be friends, to get along, because he has a lot of power in my relationship with Kimberly. And I am not having him to come and try to control me or control his mom while I'm with her. Well, that takes the heart out of the gesture. <laughs> and then open your gift. Unseal it. Wait. No way, bro. Usman, <laughs> no way, dude. Yes. No way. <laughs> like A whole PS5, bro. <laughs> Wow, those PlayStations turn grown men into the happiest of kids. What? Hey, I gotta sit down. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. No, it's cool, bro. I ask nothing from you than respect. And I'm not asking to respect me as your father, I'm asking to respect me as a man. Jamal, I want you to know that she's, she's safe. I would never break her heart. 
Never say never. <laughs> Let me stop. I hope he sticks to his word. The night ended with Jamal feeling pretty good about where things stand between him and Usman. Usman bought me the console and everything. And it's kind of cool how like my mom got him one, then he gets me one. It's kind of like a full circle. If that's how you want to look at it, Jamal, okay. Obviously, I'm glad it didn't go completely bad because uh, it shows that me and Usman do have, you know, potential to, you know, actually develop some kind of positive relationship. Okay, good night. All right, love you. thank y'all. Yeah, good love night. You. I feel like it's Christmas. <laughs> love you. Oh, love you too. Oh, sweet. Well, the next day, Kim, Usman, and Jamal meet up with Usman's friends, and they have a nice little bonding experience. Oh. <laughs> Come on, I know Usman. you are a professional. Professional. Yes. I saw it. You hit it. I, I saw it. I hit it, right? You hit it. It is really cool to just sit there and watch Jamal hang out with Usman and his friends. We win! Told we you. win Told again! You. They love Jamal. They love Jamal. <laughs> and so does the internet. Once everyone sits down and takes a break from the game, Usman starts to discuss his plans to adopt his brother Muhammad's son. Is that a normal thing? You know, like a brother to adopt his brother's child? Here in Nigeria, you can adopt a child. Like from your own blood? From right? your own blood, yeah, exactly. Your family, your blood is your blood. And what Usman says next, personally, I was not prepared for. You know, I didn't even talk to my family about this. You know my that right? Life? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. Wait, 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 wait. So Muhammad doesn't even know that you've been thinking about adopting a child? I did not tell him what I want to do, but I invite him there in Abuja now. That's sneaky. This is a child, a human life. That baby is not a pawn. It seems as if Usman thinks that this is his world and everyone else is just living in it. So they don't even know why they're coming? They know that why why do they think they're coming in? Turn up, Jamal. They know that why, why do they think they're coming in? They know Kimbali came, and I told them that they're going to meet Kimbala and Kimbali's son, and they're happy with that. You know, this whole time I thought Muhammad already knew that Usman wanted to adopt his child, but they're about to go and find out if Muhammad's even going to let them take the child away. My mom trusts him for his word, but like, I'll trust Usman when I start seeing his actions match his words. I don't know how truthful he is about my mom. And this is another thing that takes me a step back towards trusting him. Usman dropping this bomb completely rubbed Kim the wrong way as well. I thought but you I, told him. But I told him that they should come with Mahadi. But I thought because, you already told him. Oh, my God. Yeah. I thought you already told him that, Usman, why do you always do this to me? Because yeah. you never told me that you didn't tell Muhammad that we have. I didn't tell him this. nothing. Why? Because I feel like we need to. How can I just go and make decision without you? But you, you kind of are, though. You're, oh, my God. No, no, no. Listen, babe. Why are you worried? This is not, this is not something for you to be stressed out. Not good. You know, like, in, <laughs> I thought your Muhammad father is here. knew, though. He knew or he didn't know. It doesn't matter. Okay. He said he's You're going to You're going to handle it, so. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Where's the respect for his brother? And it's not like Usman initially wanted the boy to come with him to the States so he can have a better life. Usman wants him to come so he can get his green card and be with Kim. The baby having a quote unquote better life would just be a byproduct. I feel totally blindsided right now. Usman told me a half story. I thought I was coming here to potentially try to form this little family and to come to find out Muhammad doesn't even know anything about it. This whole adoption thing seems doomed and I cannot believe I came to Nigeria for this. Darling, come down. That's not drama. That's just messed up, in my opinion. I agree. Well, next week, it looks like Usman is going to bring his plan up to his brother. And I can't wait to hear his response. We were thinking you can give us Mahadi to adopt him as our child. Yeah? I feel like Usman's just going too far. I'm not going to steal Usman's brother's baby. This is crazy. Crazy. Don't worry, like, we are going to take care of him 100%. <laughs> this is wild. And the little boy is so cute. All right, 90 Day Fans fam, make sure you stick with ET because we are covering it all. I will see you next time.